Hi guys and welcome to today's video on Homo Homo sapiens. Today we will be discussing defining science and the scientific method. Science is seen as the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systemic methodology based on evidence. The earliest roots of science can be traced to ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia in and around 3000 to 1200 BCE. Science started out as a philosophy and the first scientists such as Newton didn't even see themselves as scientists but rather as philosophers who were trying to understand the natural world around them. Aristotle is considered by many to be the first scientist, although the term postdates him by more than two millennia. In Greece in the 4th century BC, he pioneered techniques of logic, observation, inquiry and demonstration. These all would shape Western philosophical and scientific culture through the Middle Ages and the early modern era and would influence some aspects of the natural sciences even up until the 18th century. It all began on the Greek island of Lesbos, where Aristotle made observations of natural phenomena and anatomical structures. It was in the island's lagoon that Aristotle was struck by the anatomy of fish such as the cuttlefish and various mollusks and started to try and account for the function of their parts. During this time he came up with a theory of causation based on the distinction between material, efficient, formal and final causes. Aristotle had a gradualist conception of the natural world and living things, perhaps the best expressed in the saying natura non facit saltum or nature does not make jumps. He formed a theory of sexual generation and trans transmission of hereditary traits despite having no knowledge whatsoever of DNA and genetics. Despite the number of mistaken assumptions such as the lack of a female seed, this theory encompasses a large number of valuable observations and insights that laid the foundations of modern embryology. Aristotelian thought has permeated Western science. For example, the Western physician William Harvey's discovery of blood circulation was largely inspired by Aristotle's biological ideas amongst others by Aristotle's empirical emphasis on investigation and demonstration. And there are to this day still aspects of his doctrines that speak to contemporary scientists that have been illuminated by modern scientific understanding. For example, his emphasis on direct observation and dissection. The philosopher argued that knowing in the sense of perceiving is the foundation of knowing in the sense of understanding. Now if we move on to the history of the scientific method. And Aristotle was the first to realize the importance of empirical measurement, believing that knowledge can only be gained by building upon what is already known. Measurements and observation, the foundations upon which science is built, were his contribution. He proposed the idea of induction, or the process of using a series of specific observations to support the probability of a more general conclusion, as a tool for gaining knowledge and understood that abstract thought and reasoning must be supported by real-world findings. Aristotle's method consisted of three points. The study, what others have written about the subject, looking for the general consensus about the subject, and performing a systematic study of everything, even partially related to the topic. However, Sir Francis Bacon is seen as the founder of the modern scientific method we still use today. In 1620, the English politician Sir Francis Bacon developed a method for philosophers to use in the weighing of truthfulness of knowledge. In order to test potential truths or hypotheses, Bacon devised a method whereby scientists set up experiments to manipulate nature and attempt to prove their hypotheses wrong. Bacon insisted that experiments must be consistently repeated before the truth can be known. Western society has been moving forward on Bacon's model for the past 300 years. The scientific method consists of seven steps. First step is your aim or your question. What are you planning to test? Second part is your hypotheses or the prediction. What do you think the results will be? The third is you have to have a list of all the different apparatuses that you use to perform your experiments. The fourth is the method and these are all the steps that you followed. It is very important when writing down your method that there are no pronouns. Instead of saying you pour the water into the beaker, you would say pour the water into the beaker. This is also during this step where data will be collected to prove whether your hypothesis is right or not. And also your method must be very, very detailed. If it is not, it is going to be harder for other independent institutions to replicate your experiments. The fifth step is analyzing the data that you have collected. And the sixth is to draw a conclusion and to state whether your results support your hypothesis. If they do not, you also need to state why. The seventh step has two separate parts to it. The seventh step is where you communicate your results. The most important part of communicating your results is by far the peer review. 
This is where scientists from different disciplines and independent institutions review the data and provide feedback. And the final step is having your work published in a proper accredited scientific journal. The last step, or last part rather, of this video will be why the scientific method is important. This is the most trusted method of gaining knowledge that we have. And in the words of the great Richard Dawkins, science boosts its claim to truth by its spectacular ability to make matter and energy jump through hoops on command and to predict what will happen and when. Any new knowledge gathered through this method is guaranteed to be accurate and based on evidence. Any claims made have been supported by data, evidence and has been through a rigorous process before being accepted by the scientific community. And anything that has been accepted by this community is seen as true without doubt. Scientists consistently thrive to improve on current knowledge and know what it would take to discredit the theory or their findings. And if a scientist is found to have cooked numbers and or results, the process of peer review will bring it to light and the scientist will lose all credibility and will no longer be allowed to work in any scientific field ever again. Science is the only discipline other than maths that is unbiased. Science doesn't care about opinions, religion, race or gender. Remember, data cannot lie. And this is why science and the scientific method is so important, especially in our current society. Science literacy should be encouraged globally to prevent the current misconceptions that have surfaced over the past few years. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video on the scientific method and the history of science. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please leave a like and subscribe. And remember, science is the poetry of reality.